Welcome to Module 10, where I will guide you through the process of employing various styles in SketchUp to create and capture compelling visuals for your client's presentation. Our focus today is on positioning the camera effectively for showcasing your 3D designs. To start, let's address the importance of camera placement. Notice the ceiling I have incorporated into the model to eliminate the distraction of the sky. I simply created the surface of the whole floor, push-pulled it out and placed it on a separate layer. For now, we will skip the implementation of lighting, saving that for a dedicated module. Imagine our project is complete and we are eager to present the 3D designs to our clients. To position your camera, utilize the Orbit tool to find an angle that suits your vision. You can also use the two zoom symbols as well to further adjust. And if you're lost and you don't know where you are, you can click on the zoom extent tool. It will take you out of your 3D file. This symbol takes you back to the last previews. For smoother movements, employ the walk symbol by holding and moving your mouse upward until you reach the desired perspective. The look around tool allows you to pivot around a fixed point, mimicking a natural head movement. The field of view feature is invaluable for adjusting the preview to capture more in one single glance. You can adjust it by choosing a higher or lower number. Just be cautious when altering the degree as a low number may distort the whole preview once you start orbiting out again. If you do so, I do recommend reverting the number back to about 30 degrees in case you have used a different degree angle. This number creates the standard over orbit preview mode, but of course, it's up to you and your per personal preference. But sometimes if you set your camera position at a certain spot, you may want to adjust the field of view to capture more, so it's a very useful tip. Another tool is the camera setting tool. While I don't frequently use the camera setting tool, it allows you to set the camera to a specific eye level height and position it by choosing the desired eye level height through the bottom right box. So those are the tools. Now let's find an optimal position to capture our kitchen. I will use the orbit mode and experiment with the field of view option to identify the most appealing angle. You can use the tools you prefer. Okay, now I'm happy with this position. The next video we will talk about styles in SketchUp and later I will also show you on how you can create a scene of this current preview to always be able to go back to it. In this class we go further and explore the diverse styles available in SketchUp. If you are on a Windows system, you will find a style tray already positioned on the side. For Mac users, simply navigate to Window Styles. Similar to materials, there is an array of styles to choose from and you can easily navigate through them within a single click. Every general template comes with a pre-selected style. Remember, right in the first module, we choose the interior design template. So this is the one we have currently and the styles selected. Just click your way through the navigation, try out different styles SketchUp offers. You will quickly notice that some may not be that optimal. We will learn how to customize them shortly. Let's say we opt for the grey pen style within the sketchy edges styles, just an ex as an example. Just like with materials, whenever you click on a style, 
it will be saved locally within your model. You can navigate to the In Models section to find all the styles you have selected so far. It can get messy pretty quick. Purge the unused ones to retain the currently active style. Keep in mind that only one style can be active at a time. But you can maintain different styles within this section temporarily if you don't purge them. Also be aware that when selecting a new style and purging the unused ones, it resets the collection and you are left with the style you have currently active. If you haven't done any adjustments to the current style, that's okay, as you can reload the original style from the drop-down menu. Now let me show you how you can adjust a style. We have our pen style active in the in-model section. Basically, I will adjust this gray pen temporary. As I mentioned, nothing happens to the original style. Then we navigate to the Edit tab. Here we see all the settings available. Let's have a look at the settings for edges, face, background, watermark and modeling. Experiment with different options until you find what suits your preference. For instance, I may click on the depth queue, increase my extension lines to make it look more sketchy, and remove the halo. You could also alter the line colors if you wish. Right now it's a gray, which makes sense as this is supposed to look like a sketch. Moving on to the face section. Remember when we talked about that each model has a front and a back color? Front is white, blue is back. If you don't want that, simply make the back color white as well. So if for some reason you have a model that shows the back, it will now appear in a white. Then we can decide on the face style. Click your way through to see the differences. I like this last one, as it gives a bit more depth, but it's still black and white and sketchy. Within the background sections, I don't need to adjust anything, as my background is not visible. But if it is visible from a window, you could make some changes here. A noteworthy feature is adding a watermark perhaps your company logo. Import the file using the little plus sign. It can be a simple JPEG or a PNG with a transparent or white background logo. Name it and click Overlay. Create Mask removes the white background if you have one and inverts the text. So if you would like to have your text black without a background, I would recommend to create a PNG file without a background or invert your file, meaning your logo text would need to be white and a black background. In the bottom, we can choose the blending, basically the transparency. Within the next page, you can choose the location. The logo can be stretched over the entire window, can be tiled or positioned in a single window. Let's choose the right bottom corner for instance and adjust the scale. If you're happy with it, click on finish. Now we have a watermark in our file and if we start orbiting around, it simply stays where it is. Lastly, let's have a look at the model section here. You can define the colors for displaying certain settings. This part here will make more sense once we start creating elevations. You can basically define the section fill colors, the line width and so on. 
we can also define whether to display axes, section planes, or guides. Once you will select this style, they will either be displayed or disabled. You can obviously manually turn them on and off anytime, but this is just a standard of what you want SketchUp to showcase when activating a certain style. Now you, you may have noticed that an arrow symbol appears, letting you know that the style you have selected originally has been adjusted. If you update this style, it only applies to the style under the In Model section. That's it for the Editing section. In the Mix section, you could experiment with combining styles by selecting the arrow key up here. Choose from the bottom and drag it up to apply specific edge or face settings to the current style. Just be careful, the return button won't work, so don't start mixing styles right after you have finished adjusting one specific style you like. I rarely mix styles, but if you have time to play around, go for it. I have my standard styles that I'm usually working with, and I don't really need further styles that often. Now let's go back to select style section. I can now rename my temporary style. If you wish, you can create a new collection and save it under your favorites. You can add it to your desktop, for instance. Then select it from the drop down menu. At this point, it should be empty as this is a new collection. Using the arrow button again opens the bottom section where we can choose our in-model section. And then simply drag and drop our newly created style in here. Now it's saved and once you start purging unused, it won't disappear as it was saved on a collection on your desktop. You will also notice that in your folder a file was created. To save you time, I'm sharing my go-to styles with you. Download the folder from Model 10 zip file. Save the folder on your desktop or somewhere safe. Then go back to SketchUp. Now instead of selecting a new collection, we choose Open an existing collection to access my styles. In the same way as you created a new collection, my master collection will now appear in the drop-down menu as well. Here you will also find the grey pen I just created and some more other styles which we will use in the upcoming videos. For, tra For training purposes, I do recommend to do each step seen in this video and make your notes if necessary so you understand how to choose a style, how to adjust the style and understand where your adjusted style has been saved. Then of course, how to create a new collection, how to add styles to your new collection that will be saved on your desktop, and once you start a new project, on how to import an existing collection to it. You can also use my master styles collection and build it up with more styles if you wish. Because it is saved on your desktop, you can easily load it into your new project. Lastly, let me show you how you can export this preview as an image to present it to your clients. First, define your view and the window frame. Then simply choose File, Export, 2D Graphic. You can select a common file like a JPEG, TIFF, PNG, etc. And please open this option settings now. Here you can choose the current view size, but the quality might not be that high. So if you need a higher resolution, remove this check mark, click on the chain to keep the current ratio of the window and increase the pixel amount. 
you can also define centimeters or inches. This could make a nice art to frame for your future clients as well, don't you think? Anyway, choose your desired size and increase the quality and click OK. It might take a few seconds to process. Then you can export and have a look at the output quality. Doesn't this look great? I love those clean fine lines. Please recheck as well the file size you have created. Usually black and white won't have many information, so the file size won't be that high. You could send it to your clients by email without a problem. Just recheck that after your export. And in the case it's too high, lower the amount of pixels. Okay guys, these were a lot of information and maybe you need to watch this video twice. Don't forget to purge unused styles to keep your file clean and organized. In the upcoming video I will guide you on creating scenes and saving them as a video presentation. Hello and welcome to this class where we will explore the creation of a video presentation using SketchUp Scenes. Let's begin by understanding how to capture a specific position and style for future reference or seamless transition between multiple scenes. To access scenes on a Windows computer located among the tags on the right side, for Mac users choose Windows Scenes. Currently, this area is empty as we haven't created any scenes yet. Now let's create our first scene with the current view. In the bottom section, you can define what SketchUp should save for this specific scene. I recommend unchecking the Include an Animation box if you don't want it in your video. Don't worry, this will become more clear very soon. Use the plus sign to create the scene and consider renaming it if necessary. You can turn off the thumbnails to optimize your performance. Notice the new tab on the top of your SketchUp file as well. Now let's orbit around and create another scene of the kitchen view. Now when we switch between the scenes within this window, nothing happens to the model preview. But within this window, you could make adjustments to the general settings. If we do select the tabs in the window themselves, you will see that SketchUp starts moving and this way you can switch between both themes back and forth. To create or adjust transitions between scenes, Please open View Animation Settings. Here you have the option if you would like a transition time between the scenes or not. We will have a more detailed look at these settings once we create more scenes for our video. Let us now adjust the current scene too. I would like my video presentation be in 3D color, not black and white. So I will choose a different style. Let's say I use the 3D standard color from my master collection. And this one I would want to include in my video presentation. So I do check this box. Then we need to update our scene to override the last settings. Let's create our first video. First, we need to have an idea of how you want the camera to move. So let me orbit out the position a bit. This would be a good starting point. I will update my scene again. By the way, if you don't like the axis to be visible in your video, like in this current preview, you may have to turn it off under View 
axis. It's a setting you can define within the style section. As I do want them to be displayed in general using the 3D mode, I have it active in this specific style setting. But for the video, I will just turn the axis off manually and update my scene again. A dialog asking you that you have made changes to your current style. That's because we disabled the axis view just now. We can update the selected style. You will notice that the errors in your style tab will disappear. And now this style is locally saved, so no overriding of your original style. Let's click Generate Scene. Depending on how big your file is, this can take a few more seconds. It does help to remove the thumbnails, believe me. It's gonna be way faster. Just let it process and don't move your mouse or anything to give SketchUp enough time to finish the next scene. Keep going with your scenes with the idea of where your camera will move around. Just know the further your stops are away from each other, the faster your camera will move. And the shorter away you set your scenes, the smoother the video will get. But please don't make too many. Just try it out and find a good balance of how many scenes you need. So what is the scene exactly? Basically, it's a fixed camera point to where you can switch back to within a few seconds. Let's say I use the Zoom Extend tool to get out of my model. Once I click on my scene here on the top, it will bring me back immediately to my saved scene preview. This way, you can set yourself multiple views to show it to your client instead of orbiting within your model. Now that we have defined a couple of scenes, let's go back to the animation scene settings. Right now I disabled the transition, but let me check that back on. Define the seconds for your transition time. The higher the number, the slower it will transition. Let us start the animation preview by choosing View, Animation, Play. SketchUp will start playing your scenes one by one. Of course, only the ones that you have that check mark on within the scene settings. By defining how long the transition time should be between two scenes, you make your transition faster or slower. One is super fast. I find three somewhat suitable. Then you could decide if you would like SketchUp to make a stop between scene points and hold there. I don't really like that setting, but if you prefer that, you could decide how many seconds it should stop. I usually keep it as zero, as I like a smooth flow, but that's your choice. You can always stop the animation by clicking on one current scene if you feel you need to make changes to it. For example, in some scenes, you can see the laundry room. So I do like to turn on the laundry room tag to be able to see the laundry room in this specific view. So I select the scenes where it is visible. Then I activate the laundry room tag and simply update my scene. Now when I start my animation again on this specific scene, it will turn on my laundry room tag. As you can see, it saves many settings within one scene. So when working with scenes, try to be focused on what you would like to display and be careful to which scene you are updating. With the arrow keys, you could change the order of scenes if necessary. Maybe you would like to include an additional scene afterwards and this way you can change the order. Now that we have our scenes ready, Let's create a video by selecting File, Export, Animation. Select your desktop or somewhere you want it to be saved to. Choose 
MP4 video and please open the options. If you would like a good quality movie, I recommend following settings. You could certainly change your aspect ratio, but personally, I like the video settings to be 16 to 9. Please note that this can take up to 30 minutes or even more depending on the amount of scenes, but it's worth it. I wish we could choose 60 frames per second, but SketchUp isn't that far yet, so 30 it is. I export and I will get back to you once that is done. And here is the final results. Do you see how smooth it is? That's because I haven't included the stops. A couple more recommendations. Instead of creating a huge video file with hundreds of scenes for all rooms at once, think about creating videos of each room separately. Meaning, use the checkbox for animation and activate the scenes you want to create a video from, deactivate the others before exporting, and so on. You basically create single videos for each room. Later, you can combine them into one video presentation using Canva or another video editing program. If you have started to have single rooms as SketchUp files, even better, you will only have a few scenes for each room within one file. Usually, I don't really keep all my scenes after I finished the video and I start editing them as I don't like to have too many scenes in one file, but it's up to you. Just note that the last scene you delete will activate the latest style that was selected in it. So if you have a specific black and white scene or something, you may need to select your standard 3D style again to go back to your standard working mode. For that purpose, you can keep the scene too and just rename it to working mode or something like that. So you can always go back to that. Okay guys, now it's your turn to create your first video using scenes. There's one thing I wanted to show you before we continue. In the past video, we have created a video presentation using scenes. I would like to actually show you how you can create shadows within SketchUp using the Solar North extension and the sun settings. Just be informed that this can take time to figure out the correct settings and depending on your computer performance, your SketchUp might be very slow in handling shadows. So preferably, save any progress before you start using shadows, as it can happen that SketchUp might crash in between. Also, I recommend not using shadows on a huge file with multiple layers on, so make sure to turn off all the unnecessary layers that you may not need for this specific view. First, let us make sure you install a free extension called Solar North. You can open up Extension, Extension Warehouse. Just like the SketchUp warehouse, this is a warehouse specifically for extensions or plugins. There are many extensions out there and you can install and try it out in the future. If you're a beginner, maybe you can focus on getting more confident with SketchUp before trying out a lot of extensions. But the Solar North is a useful tool. Simply search for it and install the plugin. You will know that it is installed by viewing extensions. It should be there. Then move on to Windows Shadows to open your settings. For the Windows computer, you should have this tab on the right side. Lastly, we start our shadow preview under View Shadows. Just like Access, you can simply turn the shadow settings on and off anytime. 
Once they're on, SketchUp needs to render a lot of information, so it can get really slow sometimes. So when do I use shadows? Usually only to create a JPEG view of a specific room for the client and to create some nice atmosphere. Now let's move on to the settings. First, let us use the Solar North tool to set our sun direction. You basically tell SketchUp where north is and depending on the UTC you choose, the sun will be north or south. Toggle to Extension, Solar North, Set North. Click once and start moving your mouse around the compass until you see the shadows on your surfaces. Click twice to set your sun. Recheck the shadow settings as seen in here. You could choose your country, UTC time, but personally I didn't find that helpful most times. Rather than that, I just like to give my 3D view a nice atmosphere, so I don't pay that much attention to the UTC. I'd rather choose any UTC that will work within my file. I recommend trying to setting it at 11.30 for the hours and for the time of the day somewhere around noon. You can also see the different month settings. You really have to try it out and see what looks best in your opinion. Sometimes you may need to set your solar north again until you see the shadows. Lastly, you can fine tune with the light and dark settings. We could export this view, save another scene specifically for that, or even create a whole video presentation using the shadows. That is totally up to you and of course your computer performance. Okay guys, now it's time to try it out and see how it works for you. If you need further help, you can always get back to me anytime. Don't forget to turn off the shadows whenever you don't need them. In this video, I will demonstrate how I created this top view using scenes and styles. Before we start, let's make sure to create a scene to which we can go back later on. Basically a backup setting view of this current state. If you have seen the previous videos, you know what I'm talking about. Basically your working mode, the standard 3D I use for modeling. If you haven't created a scene within your file yet, make sure to set a scene and rename it. Let us review our current section planes within the model. Currently, we have only one or two saved, depending on how many you have previously produced. In the bathroom design videos, we have created a couple of section planes to cut through the house in order to be able to access smaller areas. You can keep them or delete them as you wish. I'm going to delete them as I would want to have a clean start here. Let us create another section plane. This time we don't cut through the side of the house. We basically create a cut from the top using the blue axis. I'm going to name my section cut top view. If you have a ceiling activated or are working with a two-floor story house, you can now cut through it and using this section cut to define your position. If you don't have a second floor, you can certainly as well just turn off your ceiling tag and use the top view. But let me show you on how we use the section plane in this manner. We select our blue axis section plane, click right and choose Align view. We then click on our zoom extend tool and zoom a little bit back in so we can preview our plan through the whole window. Now turn off the section planes and activate more layers for a comprehensive preview of the complete floor. 
I'm trying to not orbit any longer, as your top view will be lost. So just choose the layers you want to display. Now, if you haven't changed the camera options since back from module 1, you should still have Camera Perspective activated. Now comes the magic. If we change to Camera Parallel Projection, you will quickly notice the difference. It becomes essentially flat. That's what we need for this purpose view. I can now modify the style if needed and choose the 2D elevation color from my master collection. And because we want this view to be used in the future, I will create a scene for this and name it Floor Plan Top View Color, for instance. I'm still not orbiting. This specific view or scene has saved all the settings now. If you need to make changes to it, you can do so. Just remember to always update the scene. As we switch back and forth between scenes, you will really appreciate the variety of settings SketchUp actually saves within one scene. It's just amazing. Let us select the floor plan top view color and create another scene. I'm changing the style for this one using the 2D elevation black and white style and update my newly scene. Rename it again, obviously, to identify it later on. And here we have two floor plan top views that we can export as a JPEG as seen in the previous videos using the file export 2D graphic option. Please be informed that this is not a scaled plan export. This file is mostly used to just showcase the floor plan of your client as a preview or for a real estate project or something like that. If you need a scaled file, we need to send this file later to SketchUp layout and generate a scaled drawing from it. We will cover this in module 11. At this point, you will notice that you could create your entire project in 3D first and then generate a 2D spatial plan from it. We did create a custom spatial plan from the beginning, as I find them crucial before starting any 3D design, but it is totally up to you and your personal preference at which point of your process you want to create the spatial plan. One more thing to mention. If I have a top view scene selected and start orbiting, you will notice that the whole file looks strange. That is because in this scene, we have activated the parallel projection camera setting. That's why I created the first scene in the beginning to go back to my original 3D working mode. Do not have to constantly switch camera settings. I will also not delete those new scenes, as we will use them later in SketchUp Layout. Okay guys, now you know how you can use scenes to create a top view image or a spatial plan after you have finished your 3D modeling. I recommend watching the previous videos twice if you need more practice. It's really fundamental that you understand how to work with styles, scenes, and section cuts or planes to be able to start using those views later in SketchUp Layout. The next video we will use the same technique to create unscaled elevation views for presentation purposes. In today's class, we will create unscaled 2D elevation views of our kitchen. By now, you must be familiar with creating section planes and cuts, scenes, and working with different styles. 
For this example, I will create two elevation views, one for the north wall and another for the east wall. Let me start with the north wall. First, we view our section planes. As this section plane is used for two of my other scenes, I have to keep it and can't delete it. Let's create a new section plane on the northern kitchen wall and given a name you will remember. I'm using key E N or Kitchen Elevation North. I move it somewhere where my island won't be visible and align the view. Now we turn off the section planes and select Zoom Extend. Obviously, we keep the cart and the fill activated. As my laundry room and entryway is also visible, I can turn those tags on as well. Then we select Camera, Parallel Projection. You will notice that you can also view the inside of the cabinets from the east kitchen wall. So if this is important for you to display in your elevations, you may need to design the interior of your 3D cabinets as well. For this example it's not necessary, as my carpenter will design the interior of the kitchen cabinets himself. But you could certainly be very exact here and design the cabinetry interior shelves. But that depends on how much time you can put into your project and whether it is even necessary. Let us adjust the style and use the 2D elevation color to get a white background. Remember when I told you that we will go back to the style modeling sections settings? Let us quickly have a look. Now for this specific style I have created or basically changed the section fill color. You can certainly adjust this in here and choose a darker or lighter color. I do not recommend to choose white as otherwise you can't really distinguish where the cut is. Now you can clearly see where your wall and your ceilings are and the cut within your cabinetry. You could also adjust the line weight and make it a little thicker. I think the standard is usually set at 3. I do prefer thin lines, that's why the standard for this style is set at 1. Notice that it shows that you have made changes to your style. But as I mentioned in the previous videos, if you update the style it will be only temporary saved and won't overwrite the original master styles. Just play around with the settings in case you want to adjust something or simply use the 2D elevation styles as R. You can try the black and white settings as well. I personally like the style in color. This way you are able to view the materials as well. So choose or adjust the style as you prefer. Then we create a new scene for this specific north elevation view. I will call it key en for kitchen elevation north as well. For training purposes, let me quickly create another scene for the east wall. This time I'm simply orbiting around and copying the current key en section and use my move tool. For windows, you have to press control. For Mac, I press the option button until I can see the little plus sign appearing. With my rotation tool, I can also rotate it to any degree I wish. This way, you could also create a cut through a house like this. But I want it to be aligned frontal to my east wall. Since it's a copy, it does copy the name as well. So to rename a copied section plane, you have to use right click entity info there you can there you can rename your section plane now what's left to do is to align the view hide the section planes and click zoom extend Now we can create another scene for this elevation view called Kee. -E. 
Kitchen Elevation East. Since my living room, laundry room, and office is visible here, I would need to turn the tags on. See how fast we can switch now between elevations. So for every elevation I need, I need to create separate scenes. Later in module 11, I will show you how you can use those specific scenes that you have created in SketchUp and use them in layout. We will also learn how to display only parts of an elevation, like the kitchen only. But for now, let's keep it simple. At this point, we could export those elevation views as a JPEG as we have learned in the previ previous videos. But remember, they will be unscaled, so only for simple preview purposes. Another important thing to mention here. If I were to go back to my working mode or any other of the scenes that I have created and start moving objects, for this instance, I'm going to move the vase a little bit. If I switch back to any of my elevations where the vase is visible, you can see that the alignment of the vase or basically the placement of the vase has been adjusted. That's because it does save certain information within the scene, but it doesn't save basically the or it preserves the 3D design itself. Which is good, because imagine you would have to make all adjustment for all scenes moving the vase. So if I were to adjust my kitchen cabinets in the 3D working mode, it will also be updated in my elevation views, as this is actually the 3D file itself, no matter if you adjust it within the working mode and the spatial plan elevation or any other scenes. But using the parallel projection and the scenes just make them look flat. Okay guys, by now you should be familiar on how to set your camera, how to work with styles, how to create scenes and use scenes and styles to create a video presentation. A top view or an elevation view. Basically, you are ready to start creating beautiful drawings from your 3D designs using SketchUp Layout.